All right, welcome back to the color switch tutorial series here in Construct 3. In the last video, we set up our ring spawner and it works great. So now we're going to set up some gameplay mechanics and I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a group and I'm going to call this uh, game play mechanics. There we go. Uh, inside the gameplay mechanics group, I'm going to add an event and I'm going to pick sprites, ring, and I'm going to say overlapping another object. And that object is going to be our player object. There we go. When our ring overlaps the player object, we're going to set up some code to tell it what to do. We want to destroy the ring. We're going to play the particle that goes with that color and we're going to add uh, to our score. But we have to do that for each color of ring that interacts with the uh, player object. So we're going to have to set up some sub events. Right click uh, on the uh, ring event, right click and say add, let's go add blank sub event. So over here on the layout, when our player object has the blue corner sticking straight up, the angle is at 15. I want to know when the player object is at that angle. So I'm going to double click and add an event. Let's pick our player sprite. And I, I don't necessarily want it to have to be in a stopped position. I want to give it just a little bit of leeway. So I'm going to go five degrees either way. And I know that it blew straight up is 15 degrees. So I'm going to say is, uh, between angles and that's going to be the first angle is going to be 10 degrees and the second angle is going to be 20 degrees so as long as it's somewhere in between 10 and 20 degrees then we can run this code and that code is going to be add an action let's go to our sprite let's go to the ring and type in uh, destroy and then let's add an action Go to System, Create Object. We're going to choose the object as Particles Blue. And we want that to uh, be created on a quotation mark. We want uh, the game layer. There we go. And the X value is going to be wherever that ring is when it is destroyed. So we want the X and Y value of the ring. So we're going to just type in ring dot x and for the y value we'll say ring dot y and then lastly we want to add an action say system and type in add to we want to add to score and we want to add one point each time that uh, we make a match so whenever the ring is overlapping between 10 and 20 degrees, it's going to do all this. Let's play that. So there's our blue, and it destroys the ring and plays our particle. And if you notice, if I change, it's not between 10 and 20 degrees. See, that's at 15 degrees. That's not, neither is that. So that condition's not being met. All right. One other thing we need to add to make sure that the colors uh, are matching is that we know the player object at 15 degrees is blue because blue is straight up. So I'm going to add into this event another condition. I'm going to pick sprites, ring, and compare frame and it's going to be equal to zero because that's the first frame. If we come over here and we look at our ring, this is zero, one, and two. So if it is between 10 and 20 degrees and the animation frame is zero, 
that means it's blue, then it'll run this code. We're going to uh, do this again for each color. So I'm going to add an event and then go to sprites, our player, and between angles. We said earlier that uh, three, 360 degrees of motion divided by 3, which gives us 120. So I am going to add 120 degrees plus the 15 degrees that it's already sitting at. So that will give us 135 degrees. And I want to go 5 degrees on either side. So 130 will be our first angle. And then 140 will be our second angle. And let's add another condition. Double click on the event and say sprite ring and compare frame. And this is going to be the second one, which will be frame 1. And then we can take all three of these, copy them. And actually, if you just hold control, and with these highlighted, hold control on the keyboard, click and drag, and it'll drag a copy out. We just need to change what color of particle. And we know this one is the second frame, so that's yellow. So we are going to pick particles yellow. Everything else will stay the same. And this is actually supposed to be a sub-event of this condition right here. And uh, that is my fault. I added an event. So if I click this and over here and we highlight this entire block of code, I can click down here, hold it and drag up here. See that blue line? And just drag it to the right. I don't want it there. I want it right there where the blue line on the left side is flush with that sub-event above it. So now, see how it indented it? So now this, if I just pick this event, it picks all the sub-events under it. Okay, that was my mistake. All right, I'm going to right-click on here, and I'm going to say Add Sub-Event. And that sub-event is going to be the player, and in between angles, so we were at 135 on the last one. So if I add 120 degrees to that, that gives us 155, or I'm sorry, 255. And I want to go 5 degrees either way. So we'll say 250 for the first value and 260 for the second value. Now we can double click to add our another uh, condition. Let's go to the ring and compare frame. And this is the third frame, which you know it starts at zero, so zero, one, two. And that's the red. So now we can take all of this, highlight all those, control, click, and drag down a copy, and then go into the particles and change that to red. There we go. So let's go ahead and preview that. I have, uh, let's see, yellow works. We get the uh, yellow particles. But see, that condition was not met. The red is, but the yellow comes down and it goes right through because it's not at the right angle. Same with the blue, but if the red meets the red and the blue meets the blue, we have a condition. And then we don't. So that is working quite well. So one of the things you might have noticed was uh, some of the rings weren't uh, being destroyed when they made contact. They overlapped but weren't immediately being destroyed. And that is because if we come over here on the layout and go into the player object, uh, mine, for some reason, the bounding box is set up weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up a little. You can see these points here. I have too many of them for one, so I'm going to right click, delete, right click, delete, right click, delete. So I only need three. I'll delete that. So I have, I have these three points and I'm just going to set them up at the corners of the triangle. 
and that should solve our problem. So if I preview again, and we get, there it is. It's happening right as soon as it makes contact. So it looks like the point of that, uh, of that piece, of the player piece, is stabbing the ring and making it explode. All right, so that's fixed. Just a little bit more here. You notice that when we don't have a match, the ring just goes through the player object and off the screen. But what I want is to say that uh, you lost the game. So now I'm going to, still inside gameplay mechanics group, I'm going to add, a, add an event and I'm going to say sprite ring and the same thing as we did above, overlapping another object and that's going to be the player object. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to right click on that event, add a blank sub event. So that is what we should have. So now I'm going to do what we did up here. So if we double click in this event, go to our sprites, player, and is between angles, and we had a 10 and 20. We can just copy down what we have over here. And then I want to highlight this and double click on it and add the sprite ring and compare frame. So it's the exact same thing we did up here, but we're going to do something a little different. Uh, animation frame equals zero. That's what we want. So see, this is the same as here, except on this one, highlight this uh, ring animation frame equals zero and hit I on the keyboard and that inverts it. That says up here we say if it's between 10 and 20 degrees and the animation frame is zero then do this and add one to score. Down here we're saying if it's between 10 and 20 degrees but it's not on frame zero then well you messed up and we're going to add an action sprite. This time we're going to pick the player and we're going to say destroy, add an action, uh, system, create object. Let's choose that object and we're going to pick particles player. And that's going to be on the game layer at the x and y value of our player object. So player dot x and player dot y. And then this time we're going to set a different variable. So add action system set value of game over to true, which is one. And we will set up what happens with game over here in just a minute. I'm going to do the same thing for each color. So let's uh, right click on this event and say add sub event and then I'm going to double click in there and I'm going to pick the player object and say between angles and that is 130 by 140 and we'll add another condition and that is going to be our ring compare frame and this is the second one so that's one and then we want to hit I on the keyboard to invert it. And then we can copy all of this, control, click, and drag down a copy. And that actually, none of that needs to be changed because we use the same particle each time. So let's add one more sub event. And we'll add our player between angles to 50 and 260. Double click to add another condition, pick the ring, compare its frame. This one's the last frame, which is two. Invert it. And then we can copy all of this onto there. All right, this is our gameplay mechanic. Let's preview that. We have a blue, a 
yellow, another yellow, a red, and oops, the wrong match was made, and our player is gone. So, and you can see that our score is updating. It's keeping score, so that's working too. All right, we will take care of uh, what's happening here in the next video. We will set up our game over logic, and remember to save, and I will see you in the next video.